Sunday morning, 10 Eastern and Pacific. Well, at 3.50 in the morning, a thief cut a padlock on a gate, broke a window, and was inside the Montmartre Museum in Paris. Police say it took him 15 minutes to steal five masterpieces, including a Picasso and a Matisse. Yeah, and the burglar was actually caught on one of the museum's working security cameras. But the problem was the $18 million security system itself was broken since March. It was due for repair, and apparently they were waiting on some parts. Well, what's the latest in the investigation? Joining us now, Robert Whitman, founder of the FBI's art crime team. He also wrote a book about this, uh, the upcoming book, Priceless, How I Went Undercover to Rescue the World's Stolen Treasures. Thanks for joining us this morning, Robert. Uh, thank you, Karen. Nice, nice to be here. So let's uh, talk about this particular one, this latest one, uh, the, the crime of opportunity, or was this something uh, that was planned? Was it an inside job? Uh, what, are some, what, what are some of the clues that, that this person left behind? Well, I think there's going to be a lot of forensic evidence. Uh, you know, when the police do their investigation or are doing their investigation at the museum, uh, you know, the window was broken. That's how the, the uh, assailant got into the museum. So. They wanna, they're going to be checking for blood, uh, any kind of uh, trace evidence of that nature, maybe cloth uh, from tears from his, uh, his outfit, his, his, his whatever he was wearing. Uh, I think they'll also be doing a, a neighborhood canvas to see if anyone uh, saw, you know, a getaway car or if anyone was, you know, conducting surveillance outside. Uh, those things will all be done, and, and uh, I know the OCBC, which is the uh, investigative group, who uh, handle art theft in Paris will be doing a great job. Okay, okay, Robert. Listen, let's say that you're in charge of the investigation here. You're looking over the theft. You're you're taking inventory of what was stolen. You got a, a Picasso, a Matisse, a Brock, a Modigliani, and a Leger. And apparently, he knew the value of it because there were two Modiglianis that were hanging in the same gallery. He took the more expensive one. What does that tell you about the perpetrator here? Well, obviously, he had been casing the museum. Uh, you know, just recently, the, uh, a Picasso was sold at auction. It was uh, for under, over 100, I think, $4 million. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a world record for a Picasso. Uh, so it's been in the news, and obviously this, these thieves or this thief has been, uh, you know, uh, looking at the museum, seeing what he's interested in. He's done some homework, and he's uh, following the news to find out which are the most important and most expensive paintings. But then where does he go from here? Because, I mean, it's, it, they're so famous that how do you ever sell them on the black right. market without getting caught? Well, that's the question. Uh, you know, from my experience working 20 years as an investigator in this field, I've seen that these paintings go two ways. Uh, they're, they're stolen for one purpose. The first reason is for money. Uh, it's about greed. It's not because these thieves are any type of art lovers. I can guarantee you that. Uh, they're not stealing them to have them hanging in their homes. Uh, they're stealing them for money. <clears throat> the second reason they do it in France and in Europe is because they use them as a sort of get-out-of-jail-free card. Uh, in other words, they're not just involved, these people are not just involved in criminal activity involving art theft. They're also doing auto theft, gun running, selling drugs. Uh, and in fact, the south of France, that area there, uh, along the Nice, Marseille, Riviera coast, is basically an entry point for a lot of uh, illicit, and crime, uh, illicit activity and crime in Western Europe. So they're, they're doing other things as well, and they keep these paintings uh, basically in abeyance and back. They maintain mm -hmm. them. And they use them as get-out-of-jail-free cards. Yeah, so it's sort of like if they get nailed on another crime, they say, oh, well, exactly. you know, I'll give you back these paintings if you let me off on this one. Exactly. Now, now you investigated uh, a very famous theft from the Isabella Gardner Museum in Boston. About $500 million was the value in the paintings. Have, have those paintings ever resurfaced? How is this case similar? How might it be different? And when we talk also about who might be out there to buy these paintings, aren't, aren't there some really wealthy people who might grab one of these in the black market, stick it in a room that only they know about, and go down and look at it every day to say, I've got a Picasso. Nobody knows I've got it, but I know I've got it. You, you've been watching Dr. No and, and reading your James Bond, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Um, you, know, you know, John, in 20 years of investigation, I never ran into that. I no? never saw... A, you know, I never saw the collector who would hide their, you know, their, their famous painting. Now, I saw people who stole, uh, and they were collectors, and because, you know, they, they stole smaller pieces, but never these million-dollar artworks. And the reason for that is twofold. First of all, to buy that on the black market, generally speaking, 
Uh, thieves are asking for a 10% premium. That's what they want, mm -hmm. about 10%. That's where they start negotiation. On a, on a, a $10 million painting, that's a million dollars. People who have that type of, you know, uh, financial uh, wherewithal, right. they're not going to buy stolen paintings. Right. Uh, because if you have, buy a stolen painting, number one, you can't sell it ever. Number two, you can't show it to anyone. And number three, if you get caught with it, you can go to jail. So doesn't it just so drive you crazy if you that have, they had this museum with all these multi-million dollar works of art and uh, the alarm was broken for a month and a half? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the... Uh, the museum industry right now is suffering uh, worldwide because of the downturn in the economy. Uh, it's, it's, they're working on very tight budgets, and I've seen that happen on, on a number of occasions, uh, especially in Europe, because the buildings are so old, it's very difficult to keep good security systems up and operating. Uh, in the United States, we don't have quite as much of that problem because uh, we're, we're a newer country, the buildings are newer, uh, and, you know, it's easier to put these security systems in. That's one of the things I do. I work with uh, B. Gendelman, a good insurance company, and we, we do museum site surveys uh, to try to help museums and protect them from these types of things. Robert Whitman, it's great to talk to you. Robert, uh, again, the uh, author of the new book, Priceless, How I Went Undercover to Rescue the World's Stolen Treasures. Great to talk to you this morning. Great. Thanks so much. Hey, thank you. All right. And if we ever come across anybody with a secret room, we'll, we'll be sure to tell the world about it. Because he said he's never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Jarrett.